Bird, 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 bird. Feeling, I'm feeling spry. Hey, everybody. It's Ron Bain with the Hunting Dog Podcast. Guess what? Guess what? There was more question and answer episode with Justin. I don't know. Didn't load. I thought about cutting it in half, and I didn't do it on purpose. And then I realized that when I was listening to it, that there was at least another 45 minutes or an hour of it. So here it is. And... I will not bore you to tears because this is not this is what I call a non-scheduled podcast. So my sponsors, I will name them off, but I'm not going to go into blah 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 blah. You know, it's Patreon, Pike Gear, Purina Pro Plan, Gunner Kennels, Beretta Shotguns, Mountain Ops, Onyx Hunt Map Systems, Gumleaf Boots, Orion Coolers, Backridge Ammunition, Perrin Brewery, the best place in the whole world to go have a beer if you're in Mesquite or uh, Grand Rapids area. Electronic shooting protection and Salem Auto Sports, where my truck is getting wrapped tomorrow with a bunch of cool decals. Um, that's it. I think I got everybody. Oh, you know what? Here, here, two shout outs, real quick. And this is not that you know, I said I wasn't gonna. Anyway, if you go on Gumleaf's website and you'll notice that he's got a link for Gregor Gear, Gregor Handmade Knives, a friend of mine, Steve Gregor's, a, a NAVDA judge down in the Carolinas. And as he retired, he decided to start making these cool-ass handmade knives, handmade, you know, uh, why would I, a sheath, sheath, handmade, hand, all handmade knife. Go to the Gumleaf. If you go on Gumleaf's website, you'll see all of Steve's designs. And also, Ryan Knapp, I apologize, Ryan Knapp was working on a ship. Uh, he's an engineer, and he happened to have a stop in Cuba. Now, a lot of you would say, if, if, if you're not a world traveler like me, you would say Cuba. It's not really Cuba. It's Cuba. He was in Habana. Of course, if you're from here, you'd, you'd put the V in it. But it's not Havana, Cuba. It's Habana, Cuba. And he picked me up a couple of kick-ass cigars that have been long gone since the last Euchre party, party. So, Ryan, thank you for what you did there. Really appreciate it. You know, in the beginning, I used to get... Literally, a lot of people sent me cigars. They did. Uh, and because they heard me talking about it. And it's kind of it's kind of died off. So hey, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to send me a cigar. Love you guys. Love you girls. Here's the rest of Justin's question and answer episode. Bye. Okay. We, we saw that one. I think that was a good one. Uh, Ron, Justin, been a Patreon patron. Thank you, buddy. Uh, for eight months, listen, listening even longer. My pup is almost two years old. She's a wire-haired pointing griffon. Been excellent, and I've had her professionally trained several times. I struggle mostly with no bird. In- inevitably, I miss a lot, and once I free her, she'll run like hell after the bird. I've tried everything, picking her up, turning around, walking away. Nothing seems to distract her from the missed bird. For a f- good few minutes, is this normal? Keep up, keep doing what I'm doing. Any suggestions? Thanks for all you guys do. So, I struggle with the no bird command. You know, like that a hen pheasant. So the dog stayed steady, but when he kicks her loose, she's <laughs> straight line the direction the bird. Wherever ran. she saw that last mm-hmm. bird, whatever horizon that was on. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, the dog obviously, and he said several stays with a trainer, which is great. I think yeah. that's the right way to do it. You know, not all at once, a couple multiple stays. Yeah. Um, so he's obviously, if the dog's remaining steady while the bird is being flushed, it's got a fair amount of work on it and some control commands in place. Right, because he says once I free her. Once I free her, right. It's over. That's the yeah. key there. So, But he should have some sort of a turn command or some sort of handling command that he can steer the dog around with. And that, I would start to break that, you know, it's called a delayed chase. That's what that is. Mm-hmm. The dog stayed steady at the initial flush, right. was obedient, but right. as soon as you let me go, I'm going to go do whatever I want. they got great memories That's, for that's that. a delayed chase. <laughs> And so he's well within his rights, provided everything else is going good. The dog's demeanor is good. She's into this still. Um, 
he should start exercising some control. He says the dog's gone for several minutes, you know. Yeah, so yeah. it's not just like a hundred yard, and then you know, come, back thing, come back or something yeah. like that. No, he he doesn't want a disconnect, uncontrolled long chase. He mm-hmm. should start snubbing that. That would be a. I would use a turn signal for that. When you right. release that dog, we're not going that way. We're going this right, way. Right. Yeah. Right. So. So you got to learn. That's some of that field control. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Handling. Yep. And and stick with it. <laughs> and yeah, you got, and you can set those scenarios up. That's that's kind could. of stuff you can do mm-hmm. with a training bird. You could, yeah. You, know you know what want, I mean? Yeah. Because I mean, you, it's going to be hard to do that on a wild bird. You've got to kind of do some of that kind of stuff with some training. Well, birds, with a right? wild bird, well, it's going to be gone. It's going to be gone. gone. But you still would like him to not be hunting for that wild bird for five minutes. No, yeah. When stay with us. We're looking when you for want another one toward the creek for another grouse. Yeah, we, we don't need to look for that. You don't want him doing that with every right. hen pheasant exactly. that flies off. Exactly. Right? You got to stay yeah. with me. We're looking for other yeah. ones. Was that a two part thing? I have the page folded here. Uh, oh, there was a two part. Uh, also, I've been using Delmer Smith's Wonder Lead to teach him how to heal when walking. It gets used approximately four days a week. I can tell that he's getting better, but he still has a long way to go to walks for probably 15, 30 minutes in length. What is a reasonable amount of time for him to completely figure it out? Should I be using more or shorter walks or just keep doing what I'm doing? Like I said, seven month old, mm-hmm. um, working on heel with that Wonder League. Is, you know, I, I guess I don't know what he means by getting better. Does that mean he's not having his arm pulled out of his socket? I don't know. Yeah, that's I what mean, I don't know. And... There's a difference between coming fresh out of your truck or right. out of your house and then after you've run him for 30 minutes or right. an hour maybe or who knows. Easy to right? get a tired yeah. dog. Sure. <laughs> so if he's a little, if that seven month old isn't really jacked up and a little antsy at heel and wanting to pull, I would be concerned that we don't have much of a dog. Right, That's right. very normal. Right, right. You know, a seven month old should not be calmly, perfectly walking at right. heel and while you're going to, to go hunt. You right. know, he should be excited. Right, right. Um, and that doesn't mean he should be dragging you all around right but well the only kind of like i saw you do with that little short hair today mm-hmm. you weren't doing any heel teaching Mm-mm. but every time it really it got just a little pop yeah a little pop it's like mm-hmm. oh, oh and he kind of came back walking and he thought he'd leave again yeah. no words from you no nothing just a little pop on that leash yeah now don't drag me all over i'm not going to ask you to walk right at my side right but yeah right yeah just yeah. a little bit of manners there yeah. Um, the only thing I would point out there, a, a very effective technique um, with that, that lead he's using, they work if you know how to work them. Right. Um, is when you give that that quick tug type correction when this is for healing, mm-hmm. couple that with a sharp change in your direction. Like so a t- don't just keep degree. one. Yeah, or yeah. even a 180. Just and that really gets way. those dogs going, man, i got to pay attention to this guy. Because right. we don't always just go in a straight line. Right. Sometimes we go left. Sometimes we go right. Sometimes we We're just not stopping right at every crack on the it, sidewalk. It gets those sometimes dogs we're... very aware that I have to pay attention to yeah. where, where he's going. Right. Yep. Him and Alicia are yep. one. That's very effective. Yeah. So um, pass that along. How much downtime should I give my pup between training? My job allows me to have lots of time off. And it's... And it's tempting to do stuff with the dog all day long, but I know I shouldn't. How much is too much? She is coming up on 11 months old. How much time should I be giving my pup in between training? Boy, so I, I guess we don't really know what level of training he's talking about. But yeah, or what he's working on even. You know, Does he say? I, I mean, I, he, no, he doesn't really say. Yeah. It just says my job. I, I, I think he's just afraid that he's going to turn a dog sour on some part. I guess make, I'll, I'm just going to have to make up a stuff. Uh, I got an 11 month old dog and I'm starting to teach it some solid woe stuff today. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm being him. Yeah. I, I'm, I want to start working on woe. How often should I do that, Justin? Yeah. Where, and I'm going to use your method that you use. Um, how many times a day should I walk my dog out to that woe post? Oh. There. I mean, that's like. A, yeah. I have two short sessions. Two short in a sessions. Day. There you go. Four now, days a week. If this guy's got all, oh, I'm sorry, I'm yeah, this guy. Not even seven days a week, you right. know, four days. You don't want him get in different places, different places, and all that. Yeah. And I don't only use the post, right? No. Right. I mean, that's one of multiple that's, tools, right. but that right. is actually that's my bread and butter. So, I would say. so I'm going to still right. play this guy in the, yep. in the act. All right, Justin, do you want me to do that a couple times a a day and three, four days a week? Mm-hmm. Plenty, mm-hmm. a couple short sessions. But I'd also like to get some really good healing out of this dog. Sure. How many times? 
can I do that in between my wool post work? Mm -hmm. Can I can I go do a whole different training thing without souring the dog? Well, I think the if it's and there's a lot of variance between individual dogs here, Mm -hmm. and so but here's what a 30 minute training session could entail. Okay, it could be. Eight minutes of woe post work, mm-hmm. a 15 minute run in the field, mm-hmm. finished with uh, five minutes of healing. And and during that field run, we also did three come when calls. There's some direction right, changes, turn stuff. You know, it's don't try and be too routine with all this. You don't really have to go to four day, different schools. You no, can kind of work blend this them all it. together. You could almost like get the dog out of the crate, walk them here, do that, do your field thing, come back and finish up on a heel. Yep. Or and finish that, up with five more minutes of woe. And if you had or, that kind of time, if you had that kind of time, once a day, twice a day would be more, more than, than enough. More than enough. Yeah, the okay. one thing you wouldn't want to overdo is multiple times a day, every day, bird work. Right. Yeah, if you did that over a prolonged period of time, there's nothing beneficial. You could overdo that. Right, mm-hmm. right. All right. I like this guy. He says he has a three-year-old English cocker. Great dog in the field, in the home. More often than I like a command. More often, more often than I like after. Oh, after a command, he stops, looks at me, and pretty much says "f you." <laughs> How do I avoid some of those moments? What do I do? He knows the commands. He just ignores them. Well, <laughs> yeah. So more than often than I like after a command, this is, he stops and looks at me and says "f you." So this is kind of ironic. So we got to hit pause here. Got a guy picking up okay. uh, a cocker. Oh. He just pulled in to pick. Maybe up this a guy will know. No, no. All right, we're gonna come back to this so, one. All right, all right, we're back. We're back. Uh, Jeff and Jeff just came and picked up Millie. Little Millie, the little black cocker that was out with Taffy this morning. Mm-hmm. So hey, Jeff, how you doing? <laughs> Glad, great to meet you in person. And uh, staff them water towers, Jeff. We'll just leave it at that. (laughs) Okay, we're back to this guy. This guy's three-year-old English cocker who tends to give him a little F.U. look. And I'm I'm assuming some attitude. How do I avoid some of these moments? And what do I do after? Yeah, that's... It really smells like a dog that is hearing commands... In situations where the owner does not have the ability to reinforce them. Right. To to be consistently make the dog follow through and do it. So the dog's at least a fair percentage of the time in an environment where ultimately whether the dog does or doesn't do it is up to the dog. Right. And they kind of look at you and go, no, I don't think so. I don't want to do that right Right. now. So sometimes that can be... Uh, influenced by how if they're raised that way they're going to grow up that way and sometimes there's certain dogs that that's just part of their mental makeup (laughs) you know they're always looking for those opportunities to you know do what they want not what you want me to do right Right. now and sometimes the best you're going to do with that critter is find that happy middle ground and just you know but you know yeah Check cords. That dog dragging a check cord, dragging a, right. that, My dogs grow up with that thing. Check so I can always have some way I can get a hold of it. Right, right. And, and you know, you have to do this. I'm not asking you right. to do this. We're not voting here. This is and if the dog's been getting do. away with this for three years, it's, it's going to be hard to yeah. undo. Mm-hmm. Would, would it be, I shouldn't say safe to assume, but because we were talking earlier about starting whoa here and bringing it here and, and extending it to here, sometimes that dog could be that dog that's... You know, backyard broke, but not really done anywhere else. It didn't get extended. It, it, mm-hmm. it, because now he's not bowing, so you're saying, like, why is my dog saying F you? Mm-hmm. Maybe you just didn't do... That's a great point. Maybe you just didn't go to that next area and right? teach woe. Right. You could be getting fooled by that a little bit. Yeah, it may yeah. not be um, a disobedience. Bad dog, no, right? it, it could be like uh, the, I don't understand. You, this. you never extended my education to this environment. Yeah, yeah. 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 Right. Okay, have either of you ever done any of the hunt test games? If so, what are the things you think they could improve upon? So my only um, experience with that would have been my. Time in Oregon, which was 93 through 97, the outfit that I trained dogs for, they were active in the AKC hunt mm-hmm. test and the horseback field trials. Right. They bred some dogs and 
um, competed in that venue. So you, you trained them for that? That's venue? what they were doing with their personal dogs. Right. And then we took outside oh, client okay. dogs in for training right. at this place. And um, so my time there, if, uh, you know, like the AKC hunt test, if I had to like nitpick that, what could they do better is right. this question? Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's what saying. Um, a lot of times I saw, you know, bird fields chosen where the number one criteria seemed to be um, close to the parking area for good viewing by spectators, and maybe it was not an ideal bird field. Mm -hmm. And I saw some bird planting practices that um, the guy, they're just lazy. I mean, it's always the fastest, easiest way that we can do this. Instead of picking what is a good bird field that rewards dogs that are really hunting, Mm-hmm. And putting the birds where, if there were wild game in that ha- habitat, that that's where they would be. What uh, many of them I saw is here's the four acres. This is where we put the three birds. Every handler knows exactly where they are, and they right. walk a dog in there and basically take the dog from bird to bird. Right. You know. So, so th- I think you could do a better job. Some of them, and I'm sure that a lot of them do. I mean, percentage wise, right? I just saw a drop in the bucket. Right. Yeah, right. Yeah, right, yeah, right. yeah. So. And I, I'm not going to expound much on it, but. In my game of NAVDA, of, of judging for NAVDA, I'd say the same thing. They could pay more attention to the grounds. Mm-hmm. You know? Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, I, I think the rules and the games, there's nothing wrong with that if you want to play it. Yeah. They're, they're, they're tried and true. But I've had times where I was like, boy, you guys couldn't have found a better field. Yeah. You know? Yeah. There's, there's, you know, you're, you're asking a lot, you mm-hmm. know, of, of tame birds. And a, and a dog. Yeah, well, it's a test. You're, yeah. you're evaluating, you know, training, levels of training, right. really, as much as you are. But I think you still want to do it in an environment right. where you can see if you got a bird dog there yeah. or not. Yeah, yeah. On a previous episode, Justin said that he had a young setter that had not started pointing yet. The dog wasn't developing as expected in that regard. He said the dog was from good breeding, and the other dogs from the litter were coming along fine, so... He thought it would eventually start pointing. Curious, how did that? How did things turn out for that dog? Yeah, I know who she's talking about. My little rumor dog. Um, right. Turn, she turned out great. So that was like two years ago. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, she turned out fantastic. And the only thing I did to help that with training, I had her beautifully woe broke, mm-hmm. um, is I really started enforcing stop to flush. So when she would go in and birds would get up, whoa, right. stop, no chasing them. No, just took that, and that started to make her a little more cautious around her birds when mm-hmm. she hit set. Started a point beat, and once that switch flipped, it came out fast. Right, and uh, she, you know, and the, of course, the beauty of it is, all that stop to flush work was good for later. Now she's steady to wing. Right, 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 and right, so, right. and she was a good retriever. It was so just a, all of a sudden a different boom, road to get you. Yeah, yeah, and so she turned out great, and that's the only thing I did to help her. Yeah, that's cool. Um, love the show. Here's my question. I have two GSPs. Both are very staunch pointers, great retrievers. Finding down game is very important to me, and I train for it. I hide a fresh dead bird that the dogs did not see, tell, uh, did not see fall, and point them in that direction and send them for retrieve. Let them hunt dead. I have had great success with this. A trainer friend of mine thinks I'm crazy for doing this, claiming that I'm going to ruin their point and turn them into flushers. Is he right? And your thoughts? Well, it doesn't sound like it's caused him any troubles yet. No. <laughs> no. And so um, I don't see any problem with it at all, provided that it's injected into the dog's life at the right time. That's not something I would do with puppies right. that aren't hunting pointing birds, you're shooting holding birds, points. holding point, you're yeah. killing birds over them. And then that's also probably not something I would recommend as like a standalone drill. I would much rather do that as part of their field work where, you know, you're hunting, you shoot a bird for them, and you're going along, and then maybe... 
Um, you know, five minutes later, ten minutes later, when the dog's on a cast or not, you know, doesn't see the bird come from, whip it off to the side there and shoot in the air. Dogs come over, come back here, dead bird, dead, dead, right. dead birds, or whatever his command yeah. is. Just try and work it in in like a natural way, right? And which is, it sounds kind of like maybe what yeah. he's doing. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I'm gonna jump in for, with two things on that. <clears throat> I remember. Uh, you know the person. I'm just the name's just not coming to me. Was was at one of our NAVDA tests and wanted to get involved with it because people were coming for training and she's hearing the word you know NAVDA a lot. And uh, when we went to the tracking drills for practice, she was afraid that this dog, like, why would you do this? Because you're going to get these kind of like this, you might get this dog to quit pointing birds and just want to track them mm-hmm. and my explanation given to me through my mentors was these are two tracking and pointing are two individual instincts that a dog inherits could you turn a pointing dog into a tracking dog only it probably could with i just don't feel it's a problem i get i get her train of thought though because again it goes it, I don't like it for pointing dog puppies. Puppies. Okay. As a standalone exercise. Right. So. Yeah, we do it. And they've been well, that's the only way you can do it in right. test format, you right? Have to. Yeah. You have to. So in the test format, I wouldn't go crazy with a steady diet of setting that up no, as a no, standalone no, no. drill. Right. Right. Because you know what's absent from what your you know the real world scenario: right. the find, the point, the flush, right. the shot, a cripple. Right. And right, now right. we got a tracking job to do. Right. Right. Well, in the test, it's just. The tracking job, right? Right. The right. other you are looking at the other stuff, but that's right. a different that's a different, part of the test. Yeah, yeah. Right. It didn't immediately. And we put it in. Our, it's funny we put it in our puppy test, sure, and not in our senior level test. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. That we do not. If we see the puppy tracking, that's that's tracking. It's inherited from its parents. Kind of what you do and teach it, and it learns over the years. At least we know that this dog, because we're using a live pheasant wing pulled. And all he's got is foot scent. We want to see that there's some focus to not just go run the field in big swaths and say, hmm, this is interesting. We want to see some forward progress on that on that released bird. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But so I've never found it to be. I think it's myself two different things. But I agree with you. Now that I've done it long enough, I do very little with a puppy in tracking because mm-hmm. I know if they got it, they got it. Mm-hmm. Just like if you dragged a hot dog through the grass, one of these dogs is going to go, what's that? Mm-hmm. You know? So I don't think it's... I think the guy who says you're crazy is crazy. There. I'm going to go on the limb. I, yeah, I don't think it's going to create any no. problem. Um, okay, Justin, I've got a question for you. I got a Boykin, eight week old, and just sent him off to a professional trainer for four months. Obedience and intro to gun dog training. He left for training when he was about six months old. And I will get him back at 10 months. Do dogs that go off for training season seem to remember their owners? Always. 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 Yeah. He not will, he will not, not, don't worry one bit. Right. Um, he will not forget you. And I, I, again, just kind of a guess, a theory. Uh, I think dogs really are live in the moment. I don't feel that they have the same sense of the passing of time that we do. No. I don't think he's going to be at your trainers going, man, it's been 47 days since <laughs> I've seen my buddy. Yeah. You know? I don't think they right. think they're not wired like that. Right. right. Uh, yes, he will remember you. Um, so no worries there. Yep. Um, here's a good rabbit trail for you to go down. Okay. Because we did ask for questions other than just training questions. This one is side by side or over under. Hmm. Prefer for and your favorite gauges. Is it bird specific or your own choice? So, what's your favorite gun? I shoot a side by side probably just because that's what I. It's comfortable to me because that's kind of what I started yeah. shooting as far as a double. Yeah. Um, so that's just what I'm used to, I guess. And I'm not at all a gun guy. Right. Uh, no, they, not. no, not at all. I mean, to me, they're all just guns. It's one that is comfortable and you fits like me, yeah. and it's not heavy. I'm I'm more concerned about my dogs than the gun. Um, but you know, I like side by sides. I like 
20 gauge, I think you play around with the shell a little bit and you can hunt a really wide assortment sure. of birds with that and yep. not be over or under gun. That kind of gives you a pretty good range of birds. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm I'm a side by side guy, but I'm I'm the gun guy. Yes. I I I just something about the the side by side looks like it was up on the the rack of the sheriff's office and all the cowboy movies I saw, and I've just gravitated toward that romance and the sixteen mm-hmm. gauge for me. Okay. But it's just romance, mm-hmm. no practical reason. Sure. You know, and my buddies can't borrow shells from me. Perfect. <laughs> I didn't think about that. You're right. Yeah. How many times have you had to get a box of shells to a sure. buddy and you never get them shells Not back? With a 16. You don't expect to get them back, but <laughs> you can't even go into their dog box mm-hmm. and get your shells back because they don't have any 16 gauge. Uh, I won't go into his, his his first gun was a BPS 10 gauge. <laughs> Gee, Christmas. <laughs> Not my first gun of choice. That's a big gun. All right. Uh, Ron and Justin. So I have a covey of Huns near my house. But it falls within city limits, so I won't be able to shoot them. <clears throat> Would it help or hinder my young dog to have him work these birds that I can't shoot for him? Another question I have is, how do I convince the rest of the family? <laughs> this is kind of a, I guess I'm thinking it's kind of a funny question. Uh, let's go to the first part. Any, is it help or hinder that dog to work on those birds oh, that be, he can't it, shoot it for? It would certainly help the dog skills. Right. The only thing absent is marking, hunting dead, and recovery of the bird, right. retrieving. Yeah. But all the other skills are being exercised. Right. You know? Um, Search so nose. Yeah. Yep. 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 And, and you can even do, I maybe overlay this, depending on how old this dog is, if he gets up this covey of hunts, he can't shoot, and get his recall. It's the perfect environment for that because right? you're never shooting at him. You're never shooting not, at him. No, you're saying, no, no, not back. Come on, no that, birds. That no. dog will learn. And that. he's not going to. He's still going to love to go find them birds. Yeah. yeah. Oh, if yeah, if he's got that in him, he won't. He got, yeah. He yeah. won't go. You didn't shoot one, so I'm not going to look for him today. <laughs> Another question is, I have. How do I convince the rest of the family that we need a Brock Francais and not a Labrador? <laughs> I don't know what to tell them. <laughs> um, I'm 26 and should be moving out here pretty soon, and the dog will be coming with me. Oh. While I like labs, I'd rather have something not as common. I can probably thank Ron for that mindset. <laughs> Sorry about that, buddy. Uh, as well as something that would point rather than flush. How do I tell my family that we need a bait? I'm going to say, he's saying a Brock Francais, but how do I tell my family that we need a, a pointing dog as opposed to a Labrador? Well, how about as long as, let me just answer this one. You do it. All right. As long as you tell your parents you're not holding them responsible for vet bills, licensing, food, you let them know that I'm leaving and when I leave I'm taking this dog. This is my dog. This is my dog. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. just tell them, tell that, them that's what it is. Yeah. Now, that's all I can tell you. Yeah. I mean, or yeah. just wait till you move out if, if you're going to get grief over it. From your family. It doesn't sound like it's that far away. No, you know? no, no. It yeah. sounds like he's leaving pretty quick. Yeah, yeah just wait. Good, yeah. good idea. Yeah. Um, all right, uh, I, almost, I almost messed this one up. <laughs> I, I got to hit pause. So anyway, the question is, I'm a younger guy that just passed a black lab in a junior test. I'm assuming that's AKC Junior Hunter. I am hooked and would love to start a kennel for training and boarding in the next five years. What do you and your guest, Justin, would be a good starting what do you and Justin think would be a good starting point and what would you do in the first year at least boy there's a lot of questions here um, younger guy just passed a black lab in a junior test and hooked on it I guess he just loves this so much that he's like he's seeing a career the path the wheels turn he, he's like yeah, he's I want just, to do this forever just, and yeah. I okay. a lot of people yeah. have done this you know what would be a good starting point? Training and boarding in the next five years. So you have any other questions? Well, how much does a good wire hair usually cost? I can't tell them that. Um, how early is too early to test a dog? That's learning to, to me. That's just learning to read your dog and what it's ready for. Um, I've seen dogs that I think were too young to run mm-hmm. a natural ability test, and they proved me wrong. But most of the time, I was right. When I see this, mm-hmm. like a puppy, the, your little short hair puppy. Yeah. Yeah, he's you not ready. Never, for, he's not ready for a twenty-minute search. No, no. So, it, you know, there's no. But I can't put an age on that because some dogs are ready at six months. Some dogs are ready at a year and six months. So yeah. there's really no age on um, 
And he says, or is it just determining the drive and timing on the dog? Which is yes. You got to learn to read mm-hmm. your dog. Um, oh, how much land would you suggest for a beginning kennel? Hmm. This guy's really, he wants to Straight jump into the world. So, you know, certainly wouldn't want to discourage him if he's certain that he really, you know, is something he wants to pursue. Right. Great. Okay. There's a couple things in there that he's like building a kennel at this stage really shouldn't even be, I, I feel, crossing his mind because right. if his, if he's uncertain about what he needs for training grounds acreage-wise, he's not there yet. He's not if there he's yet. uncertain about what's the right age to do this, he's not there yet. He needs to put some time in the trenches yeah. working dogs, yeah. which means he needs to go out and... Find a job working for a training place yeah. and get some experience. If you only own one or two dogs at a time, you don't live long enough to get enough experience to be training other people's dogs. You yeah. need to immerse yourself in a volume of dogs that's beyond what the average guy is going right. to do. Yeah. Um, so he either needs to accumulate that experience by um, working for a trainer right. or... He needs to find an occupation, maybe temporarily, that affords him time and the ability to own maybe four dogs himself right. and keep going. And he mentioned the test format, said he's right. really hooked on that. Right. So maybe specialize in that. Right. Be, a, be a retriever hunt test guy and right. get really, really good at it. Yeah. Um, I'm you know, ex- glad and excited for the guy. He right. passed that junior test, but now he should take that dog on to some of the higher levels. Yeah. You know, before he should even think about purchasing land and building anything, he needs right. to be able... To handle and be able to do the work that might come his way, right. he's got to and right. he's got to get his name Starting out there. Another there. kennel training kennel is really it's the only, unless you're it, born into it and right. it's unless the family. And, business. and he didn't say his dad's one of the Smiths. No, so, well, he would know all this other he would stuff know all this. if so, he grew up in. Yeah, it. go yeah. find go find a boarding kennel or I'm sorry, a training kennel. Go meet, meet the owners. If he's Tell in the him. hunt test game, there's going to be some pros there. And somebody's going to need some help. And get to know them sooner or it's later. It's like certain, uh, what they call it, an internship. Out. Yeah. Right? That's what it is. Yeah. Yeah. Put some years in on it. He's got to. Yeah. And but, I mean, go for it. If you're sure, if you're hooked, I I, yeah. I hear you. It is yeah. it is addictive. It's and then, fun. You know what? When, when he meets those guys, those mentors that are above his level, yeah. and it might take him under his wing, all the other questions will be answered. How much room do I exactly. need? Exactly. What kind of kennel do I want to he'll keep? He'll know all that it's nothing stuff. nothing we can answer. He won't have to ask anybody right. else. He'll, he'll know, know what he needs. And he'll see the ones that stick out. He's like, now that's what I'm going to build. Yep. And that's what I'm going to He'll buy. remember. Yep. yep. Hi, Ron. Really enjoy the podcast. I recently picked up a dog from my local SPCA. It's a Spaniel mix. I'm pretty sure it's mixed with Terrier, most likely Jack Russell. Uh, I'm hoping that she will hunt with me and has shown me that there's some potential I'm not sure if she's a Britney mix or a Terrier Springer mix, but anyway, she has what I think is pointed some songbirds in the bushes a couple times. The other day, had her first experience with a grouse, which she did not point, but tried to chase. Either way, I would be happy with her. I don't want to ruin her by trying to get her to do the opposite of what she is predisposed to do. Any advice would be great. That's kind of... Different question. Yeah, different dog, but it doesn't sounds like dog likes birds. You right, know, chased That's after the a grouse. Upside. That's the upside. Yeah. So don't worry about which direction your dog's going to tell you which way to go. I mean, treat it like a flushing dog until it proves you otherwise. There you it go. Starts the point. Okay, now we're going to start going that path. Right. But treat it like it's a flushing right. dog until the dog proves otherwise. Make right. sure your gunfire introduction is sound. Just start hunting the dog. Right. And work on you know handling and range right, and right. pattern. If yeah. the dog begins to point, so be it. We'll right. cross that bridge when it right. comes. You already got. You already did the world like a favor. Got, you took yeah. a dog out of a bad spot. And so if I had somebody tell me there is a genetic test you can do with a little cheek swab on a dog now that will answer his questions. It oh. will tell him what his dog is comprised oh. of. So if it was Brittany and Jack Russell, he might. I have not done it with a right. mixed breed dog. Right. I don't but, own a, you know. Yeah, yeah. But I, somebody told me it is possible now. Twenty three and me. There's a, the canine genome is mad. I, I thought so. about a lot about my genealogy. <laughs> I did it too. I have zero percent Native American. I have some, None. That's a letdown. I, I have a I little more outdoor African than I ever was oh. told. Mm. 
My fishing skills come from my 4% Norwegian heritage. Your fishing skills come from practice. <laughs> 4% Norwegian? 4% Norwegian. That's not a lot. No. No. I don't catch a lot of fish. <laughs> All right. Uh, sorry. Oh, sorry. I have a Britney rescue. <laughs> you don't have to apologize just because I pick on Britney's a little bit on the podcast. Oh, is that why? Yeah. Okay. I, will, I call them Iowa brush pigs. They can't pass up a mud puddle. <laughs> and then somebody sent me a picture the other day of his dog out of a mud puddle and says, Ron, don't feel bad. You call the spot on. My dog doesn't pass up a mud puddle. <laughs> In the middle of a hunt, I'm going to go roll in a mud puddle. I have a Brittany rescue about to turn two. We have one full season under the belt this year. We we never would retrieve a bird in the field, but he picked up a dead one at the end and fetched it and fetched it on the road when we were done. He's good at fetching in the yard and practice. Uh, birds trip him up. We do the same drills, and I added throwing another bumper while he's retrieving. Looking for more ideas. This is my first dog, and I've made mistakes. Just trying to fix them the best I can. All right, trying to get the whole question. We have never, because he wrote, we never would retrieve. I'm sure he meant he. Mm-hmm. He never would retrieve a bird in the field, but he picked up a dead one at the end and fetched on the road when we were done. All right, so what I envision there yeah, yeah. is hunts over. Yeah. They're at the track. He found a bird. It's a bird they shot somewhere yeah. during the hunt, yeah. and then they throw it, you know, and see yeah. what the dog will do. Yeah, That's yeah. kind of what I picture go with from that. that. Mm-hmm. And he's good at fetching in the yard, in, mm-hmm. in the field, mm-hmm. with I'm assuming a ball or a stick. something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Retrieving dummy balls. Birds thing. trip him up. I mean, we can almost go to our opening one that I told you. The guy who, um, the opening letter I wrote read was the guy who wrote last year. And you said... Chomped on some, didn't retrieve the others. Tried to eat. So, it's two-year-old mm-hmm. rescue. Right. So, at most, this has got one hunting right. it says season, it sounds season like. Belt. Yeah. I'd be patient. The dog is showing inclinations to retrieve. Pick just dead bird. Not the birds yet. No, it may be permanent. I right. know some dogs just don't like yep. retrieving dead birds. Yep. Then he'll have to step in and do the trained retrieve if it's hugely, if it's, if it's a priority to him. Right, right. And it's a big job. Um, don't go thinking you're going to do that here and there, on, you know, every no, other weekend or commitment. something. It's a commitment. Yeah. And, uh, but there is no kind of, I mean, he either is or isn't going to do it if he's relying on a genetic retreat. But you don't know what you have with a genetic retrieve until a dog compiles a fair amount of experience right. and a certain amount of bird shot for him. And he may not be there yet. Right. And to say one season, we don't know how many birds this dog saw fall out of the sky. No. And it's still one season. It's still right. in the same age window. Yeah, yeah. You know, sometimes it would make you're not gonna know for a couple of years sometimes. Right. Right. But in today's world some people like the thought of a couple, you know, a year to wait find, to wait and but, see and I, keep working on something. I can't wait that long. My buddy's dog's already retrieving Justin. And that's cause <laughs> that's genetic. Yeah. It's not because your buddy has some magic <laughs> right, trick he's right. he's not sharing with you. Yeah. 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 All right, we got a seven-month-old DD pup, Deutsch Drathar, has been doing good job on recall and obedience, but starting to be less responsive. More interested in eating grass and sniffing around. We'll come back when called, but slowly. We'll stop and sniff. Best solution: let him drag a check cord around and rope him back when he doesn't respond. Cord always gets wrapped up around his legs while dragging, makes pulling him backwards <laughs> awkward. Um, advice or drills also did well with what limited exposure he had to birds building a pigeon coop and buying a couple of launchers any advice on that process finally he loves to retrieve but return is sloppy sounds like his return is sloppy like his callback is sloppy Um, uh, and he drops it early I don't want to start hold conditioning yet quite yet or force fetch just let him be sloppy and enjoy retrieves for now clean it up later 7 months old I wouldn't get too rigid about for <coughs> perfection, mm-hmm. you know, on the retrieve. Right. So here's one thing that I can't wrap my head around. Why? So most owners of young pointing dogs, mm-hmm. when their dog is having their first handful of bird contacts, mm-hmm. everyone seems to understand and accept and be comfortable with, yeah, 
they're going to bump some of them. They're not always going to point. Sometimes right. when these puppies do point, they're not going to hold real long. And that's right. all a very normal part of a young pointing dog. Yeah. Learning the ropes, right? right? You don't get rock solid, staunch points out of most puppies. Right. Why don't they have that same approach to the first shot birds? Why right. is it these people seem to expect and train for perfection? It's this. It's they're both genetic instincts. Right. Retrieving and so genetic instinct. When it, you're dealing with a puppy that's only had a handful of birds shot over it, right. you're not seeing how that dog is going to retrieve shot birds for the rest of its life immediately any more than you're seeing how that dog is going to point his birds for the rest of his life. Both, provided that they're kept in quality environments, right. are going to continue to get better, to get better right. unless we mess it up. Well, your dog, the first setter you took out today, told me that story. That, and you, what you wanted to show me was how this dog is retrieving now. Oh, the three, we, that, that was the older one. The older one. That was the one we finished the with. The one we finished with. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you wanted to show me, like, this dog, you didn't worry about it. And now it, it, it comes running back to you like, like a it's retriever. It's a fantastic a retriever. Right. Yeah, it was there. I just, it was slow to build. It's yeah. a setter, you know. Yeah. And, I, and I have a fantastic come when called, right? Right. So the pick up and hold and carry right. came along and developed. And boom. What, do you, what do you think about stopping and sniffing grass? And Is that just avoiding... The work. That's a dog being a dog. Okay. You know, you don't have to. I mean, that that you know sounds like you know. Do you, why are you calling him? I, What's going on in that situation? Right. You know, More I mean, in eating grass and sniffing around. Yeah, I gotta imagine that is in the backyard training stuff. It sounds too. like it. I don't. You, the, the behaviors I see at training fields mm -hmm. don't usually show up in the woods and wild birds. No. You know. No, a lot of times. And it sounds like, you know, let him. Yeah. If he's in your backyard, let him sniff some grass. But he should, you know. When he's called. When you called, you if you're going to make that commitment to give a command, you need to follow right. through. And then but in might... your backyard, you don't need to call him to you 20 times. Right. You know. He's got a, a seven-month-old. He's got month a old, on him. Needs to have time to be a, a dog, too. Right. It doesn't all need to be classroom. Could be too much classroom. Sure. You know. Yeah, could be can't bored. Can't do it. Um. Wrote in last time, you guys helped me out tremendously. I am now working on retrieving with her. To refresh, I have a one-year-old Brittany that's now through her full, first full season. I am happy with her except for her retrieving. We're on a whole retrieving jag here, aren't we? I put them all at the yeah, end. Yeah, you did. Yeah. Okay. She picks up birds on occasion, but not reliably. I have started hold and carry per Ron's video. Okay. But I am wondering what the next step into transition is into the field. She's holding the bumper while walking around the house in the backyard. She'll also pick it up when thrown and carry it around. How do I transition that into picking up the bird in the field? She seems to just stand over it and stare at me in confusion. Well, she probably is confused. Mm -hmm. I'm sure she is. Yeah. I, would, I would, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. I got a feeling, and because I'm sure you didn't watch my video. I haven't seen it. No. <laughs> you'll, have to, you'll show it. Justin doesn't sometime. hang out on a lot of YouTube channels. Oh. Um, I'm sure there's some good stuff on there. And... And so what I was showing was how I start a dog and what I'm looking for just to get the dog to put something in the mouth on my command Hold and, and, and release it on my command. Mm -hmm. That's all I'm asking for. Mm -hmm. I'm putting this into the dog's yes. mouth. Yeah. That's what he's got to remember. I'm putting that bumper in the dog's him mouth right. to teach him to hold mm -hmm. and then walk around the table and in and outdoors. Mm -hmm. um, I think he might have already went to birds. Sounds and, like And, and oh, I yeah. did not maybe explain good enough, like... This is a long process, yeah. You know, so I, I, I'm going to take the blame for this one, Justin. No, you know? no, you got. I mean, he's got a good start, right? But he kind of did A, B, C, D, E, and then went to L, M, N, O, P. No, he went. To, yeah, he went to V, maybe. <laughs> went to the end of the alphabet. Yeah. Right. So there's a lot between a those lot of steps. two. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot between more than we have time to go right. into piece by piece. Right. Educate yourself. Um, somebody asked me the other day, and, and my my memory was working, and they said, is there anything good to watch on the train to retrieve? And I said, yeah. I haven't really seen I, just, I don't think there's anything new. I haven't seen anything recently that mm -hmm. I was impressed with. And then I remembered there was an old video that was put out 
by Tritronics a long time ago and it had husband wife pro trainer team Jim and Phyllis Dobbs and, and it was a two part video yeah. part one was all this was before things were on DVD it's VHS right. but I'm sure it's been transferred right. and uh, and they did a great job of this is a two part program here right. and the whole first video was all on hold mm-hmm. and then the second part was on fetch Right. Okay, and they did a great job of really breaking down all the little yeah. steps and the progression. I have looked at that myself. Well, and, yeah. De- and Delmar Smith, who I, you know, so much of what I do is right out of his play. He was doing it in the 50s, right? Right. right. I didn't invent any of He could do it with a coyote. <laughs> yeah. And um, he has a very good trained retreat video. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't do it exactly like either of them. Right. And. Um, but there are components of both of those right. that are just great fundamental right. things. I, there are pieces, and that's really what I do, are pieces that I've gleaned from so many people who right. have come before me. Yeah. Um, and you kind of find a way to mold them all together and mm-hmm. put your own little individual style on it. Yeah. But he's got to start, and he needs to fill in the middle between where he left off yeah. and where he changed. Too big a jump. Yeah, too big yep. a jump. And I think being able to, for the first time, or that's the hardest thing for them to understand, right. is where all those little steps are. Right. What to him wasn't a really big step was huge was to a huge the dog. Step. To go from what I was shown on this video to picking up a bird in the field, you're right. It's two ends of the, yeah. two ends of the alphabet. So anyway, I don't have your name from this one, but you know who it is. Write me back. We'll talk on the phone. <laughs> I'll give you half an hour of consultation to leave out some of the parts that I left out or put in some of the parts I left out. All right. Uh, well, this one's got a lot of stuff on it. Let's see. Uh, oh, he said, feel free to break it down or reorganize it. I'm going to just pick on this first one. I'm getting a lab puppy today, nine weeks old. I'm looking at my first training and preparing for his first duck season, which would be this fall mm-hmm. in Wisconsin. I could shoot doves or geese over him as soon as September 1st. Regular duck season won't be till the end of September, beginning of October. Any other dog that I... Okay, so he's got some... He's done this before. Any other dog that I have force-fetched prior to taking him on your first hunt... Any other dog I have force-fetched prior... Oh, okay. He has always force-fetched his dogs prior to taking him on their first hunt in the past. Uh, this pup won't get force-fetched until this winter by season. He will have basic obedience, steady, collar work... Uh, intro to water, blind, intro to gunfire, and birds. My biggest concern is setting up to fail mouthwise in a hunting scenario. Um, just as said in previous question and answers, avoid situations where the dogs can fail. Am I being overcautious or being worried? Bloodlines are there for a good mouth and strong retrieves. Is there a good base to have on before he goes into his first season? Hmm. Huh. He's. he's Obviously, is that, force, is that, is yeah. that the end, or is well, there anything there's, else? There's, uh, I've been explained by older, you're a pup to them, retriever trainers, the difference between mouth conditioning versus force fetch. Oh, we just talked about that. Yeah, yeah. 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 What he's calling, you know, mouth manners and everything, mm-hmm. that's kind of what a lot of pointing dog guys call hold and carry. And, carry. Right. and then there's the force, force fetch, fetch part, is which making is the, the fetch. dog open his mouth. It's a command. It's a command. Yeah, yeah. yeah you got to get put this yeah. in your mouth right now. Yeah, it's just, I should say that, like, hold and carry is kind of like a long term exposure. You know, <laughs> it's just a. It's it's you don't, haven't taught the dog the word fetch yet. No, but mouth manners is a great way it to describe way to, it. You yeah. don't roll it in your mouth. You don't right. drop it. You, right. you don't you, drop it yeah. until you feel my hand on it and a word. Yeah. Um, a lot of people mix them up. I um, is there a way to mouth condition a pup prior to force fetch? Well, we just talked about yeah. that that video I did. Yeah, you could do some hold and carry work without getting down on that dog very much at all. Right and do and I do a very extensive All holding positive, carry right with and before I ever make that dog open his mouth mm-hmm. and introduce going to get something for me, I personally have force fetched two labs and three curly coated retrievers. Well, mm. Good for him. That's good. Yeah, uh, I feel like you could still instill, could still instill good mouth habits early on, but allowing the possibility of refusal on this first. So he's worried about. Mm-hmm. Taking his dog hunting and not going. bringing a duck back. Yeah. 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 Anything else? No, that's enough. Okay. That's <laughs> enough. This is long. Okay. <laughs> yeah. we still, I think that's what he's saying. Yeah. Should, you know, he's obviously force broke his other dog before hunting season. This dog's a little younger. 
Is he going to set his dog up to be dro- leaving a duck out in the water and not bringing it back if he doesn't do something? You know, it's it's outside my area of expertise, to be honest. I mean, I'm not a waterfowl trainer. Right. So, and he mentioned something in there about, you know, is he risking setting him up to fail? Well, is not being able to make a retrieve considered failure or just that he was young and it was beyond his skills i he only he can answer that i don't know you don't want to do anything that's going to diminish a puppy's confidence in his work there you go that you want you want always want a young dog to go through that first hunting season building his confidence in the work he's doing yeah so i gotta defer to other experts on the finer points of that one because it isn't my bread and butter (laughs) dog training taking a, a duck dog out yeah, I, and I don't know enough, you know. You want to? I can, I can tell him, regardless of the vein of work, he wants to build that dog's confidence and his drive and his desire right. to do the work. Right. And if he can gain experience and be taking the dog in that direction, mm-hmm. I don't see how that can be bad. But yeah, if he, if I was gonna guess from what he says about the bloodlines and everything. If he worked on all of his blind work and you know like being he knows good, his stuff. I bet you this dog's gonna go retrieve. Without ever being force fetched. Well, yeah, but I mean, he's going to do it, and you right. should if it's a retriever. You know, when Never I talk to some name. of these other guys, you know, yeah. we're talking about upland pointing dogs right. here, which is very, you know, a, re- a duck dog retriever. That is his job. That's his job. That's his job. Right. <laughs> yeah. And you know how many people have duck hunted without force fetching their dog? A lot. A bunch. Every guy we meet at a DU banquet, I bet you three quarters of them never sure. force fetched their dog no. because they, they take have what a they Labrador, get. Mm-hmm. Last name's retriever. <laughs> yeah, and they have a family companion, occasional yep. hunting yep. dog, and they yep. take what they get. Yeah. All right. Uh, dog info. Two-year-old German wire hair pointer male named Jake. Or 106 weeks for some people. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, I, I was like, listening last I like, time. I like, <laughs> I like this guy. He's two years old. Or in people talk, he's 106 weeks old. Yeah, remember we were... He was listening yeah, last time. I like that. Yeah. Uh, my area is central Minnesota, but moving to southern Minnesota uh, in a couple months. Talked to you roughly two or three weeks ago about my GWP and kenneling issues. He's doing great with that command and is starting to enjoy his kennel because of your suggestions. Um, side note, as Jake was making real steps toward the Kenlin command, some a-hole decided to steal my gunner kennel out of the back of my truck while he was at a Petco. What a... Hmm. Oh, man. They even cut the strap that held it down, so I had to get a cheaper kennel and start all over. I'll get you a discount code, buddy. Um, that was a side note. God, that, I've never heard of that. That's terrible. They go in there and cut this... Boy, that's grounds for shooting somebody. You know... And the worst part is, you know, it might have been a, a, a hunter. That, who else would know, would know that's that a, a really right five hundred dollars? Yeah, that that's a really good one, right? Jeez. It would almost be a. a I don't even want to think the worst that's of that. Terrible. But whoever did that, yeah, man, they just invited some bad juju. Yeah, on yeah. them, uh, it'll Nothing catch guys, up to them. That's right. Look down on them. Bunch of birdless Holy. days in their future. <laughs> that's crazy. I hope he had. I hope he can get insurance on it. <sighs> Oh, and by the way, uh, if you didn't make the claim yet, tell them that you had two gun, gunner kennels no, in the back. No, don't. No, that way your deductible's covered and you're still going to get... <laughs> hey, that's good advice. That's good legal advice. I don't know about that. I did that. two years of pre-law. <laughs> don't do I did not. Jake is a good hunter for his age. He has strong point, steady on point, with the help of Wall. He ranges just far enough for my liking and will hold point till I get there. He does creep from time to time on running roosters, but I can live with that. Okay. My question is on blind retrieves. I'm trying to send him out on a retrieve that he doesn't see. Example, two birds shot in one flush. He gets confused at first and pretty much stands there waiting for a bird to drop, which he would if he didn't see one. If I walk him to the area, then he will start to search. Or, I'm sorry. If I walk with him to the area, then he will search. Do you have any suggestions to get him to cast out without me in search an area on command, like that famous, you know, hunt dead, dead bird? Mm-hmm. What would you do to help a guy teach his dog to hunt dead? Just water or land? It sounds like all land. Yeah. yeah. Land's, yeah. So for an upland pointing dog and a bird they didn't mark, 
you know, your verbal command should be, and you're going to go with him yeah. to the area yeah. of the fall and right. then give him that command. Like the guy that had the argument with his friend, trainer friend about, you know, he's practicing right. the hunt dead skills with right. his right. dogs, right. right? Through those kinds of things right. and uh, real on the job hunting situations, yeah. your dog will learn to hunt dead. Yeah. Sounds like he's struggling to, to, when he said send the dog and he just stands yeah. there like waiting so that's why i wondered is there some water involved and that would be right in the your nav to water search yeah. stuff right yeah 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 <clears throat> and and for that it, it that's a lot of training and exposure you mm-hmm. know and and you in fact the, the ones that the, the couple versatiles that i've had that i in fact i used to hunt out muskegon river bottoms and I remember a couple times where guys, I'd walk and talk on the way out. They'd say, how you doing? Oh, we shot a couple. We got one down. We lost it. And I remember this one, I had that black wire hair. I could give him a dead bird command. Dead bird. But I was basically sending him on a blind retreat. Mm-hmm. And I'd done that enough with him, with enough success. He literally went out there to find the bird. Sure. You know, but, but it took a long time to get there. So, well, that's why I was asking, because yeah. he doesn't... That's a lot of work, but right. if he's at water, he almost has well, to do that. It's got to be on land, though. He has okay. a strong point, a steady on point. He's a pointing dog. I'm guessing well, he's on land. Guys. Okay. Yeah, I'm yeah. guessing. Then he doesn't have to do that. No. No. Nothing wrong with walking him over to the There's area. There's nothing wrong. No. I've done that a bunch. Oh, yeah. You know? I went and got a different dog and walked back to the area. <laughs> yeah. Um, do you have any suggestions you'd rather cast out without me? It's almost impossible to answer this because that could go into... A forest retrieve, it's a blind retrieve, and then, and then brought blind to a blind work. retrieve. Yeah. But you got to start with the forest retrieve yeah. to get to the blind retrieve to extend the blind retrieve. Till now, when you give the dog a dead bird command or a fetch command, he's going out with every idea that every time I get sent out there, even when I don't know where it's at, that I'm going to find a bird. So and, and you're going to tell him where to look it, for you're it. Gonna, That's you're what you're makes still the whole steer thing him. work. Yeah. You're still going to steer him. Yeah, but, but I want to make sure that he understands. Um, if you want to do that, that's great. That's a lot of work. That's a lot of and work. And do you truly need it? Right. Yes. If it's water. Yes. And, and yes, you because oh, yeah. you can't go. You can't him. go out there. No. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> In the grass, yeah. You yeah. mark the bird down. You mark the other bird down. Bring him over there. Yep. If you get him close to that area, he'll find your bird. Or the yeah. lazy man's blind retrieve, pocket full of rocks. Oh, done that. Yeah. Everybody, we all have. <laughs> that's how I got to a test list. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Um... Question about force fetching, my almost two-year-old German wire hair. I'm currently working with a young female, Lucy, and another almost two-year-old male, Griffin. Uh, tank on, uh, thought on force, I don't know what that means, tank on force fetching. I must, Is that a typo? I think it's a typo. It's going to be, Is that his oh no, that's name? a name, it's coming dog's back up name. again. Tank. Oh, okay, I see. Lucy is the GWP, my two-year-old Griffin, comma, Tank. Tank. On Got force it. fetching. Okay. Got that through. Tank is not much of a natural retriever. This is the two-year-old Griffin. But seems to be coming along pretty well. I have him where I will start to ear pinch. He's reaching for the dummy. He will also hold and carry a decent. So far, just keep working with it. So far, just keep working with it. Yeah. But my real question is about Lucy. Lucy is the young female German wire-haired pointer. Uh, doesn't say how young. Oh yeah, two, two. Um, yeah, the, the she's almost two. The Griffins don't. Okay, you got a two-year-old Griffin, two-year. Who gets a Griffin in the wire here? How can you tell the difference? Easily. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, all right. My real question is about Lucy. She's she's a pretty good natural retriever. She will run and get bumpers for me all day, and I just and I want to go through the force fetching as insurance. I plan on running utility tests someday in the next year or so. I can get Lucy to do a decent hold and carry, but she doesn't hold her bumper as firm as I think she should. Barely laying in her mouth. I would call it balancing. Uh, When I try to do much with the ear pinch, she tries to lay down and go limp as possible and turns her head away. So I guess my question is, do you have any different methods that she might respond to better for force fetching. I guess a different method of force fetching. Oh, so it's really very different than his other dog. Other dog, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 
Um, as far as the, I've seen, I know exactly what he's talking about that. They don't even really have their top teeth touching the balance, their balance it with their lower canines. Yeah. yeah. So sometimes yeah. fool around. So you have to remember, it's okay to fool around with different objects mm-hmm. rather than make a fight over, no, you're not holding this, whatever it is, if he's using a wooden dowel or a hard right. plastic knobby right. dummy. Fool around with different objects and different sizes and go again, try and go with the flow a little bit. Yeah. If that improves the thing. Yeah. Because ultimately, you know, you're not hunting those that's not, not the end goal we're not here we don't right it's, we yeah. just need them to get through a certain phase of the training so if there's mm-hmm. try a different uh, uh, type of object try a different size object mm-hmm. see if you can sweeten her up a little bit on that hold and then as far as her you know she doesn't like the ear pinch laying down all this okay maybe that's a sign that, that that's a lot to that dog, yeah, yeah. It I, is. I, it's exactly too much. What you're saying in your head is in my head right well, now. It's too much, right. and I've I've modified. If one thing that Broncos have taught me, they're all over the place in temperament. Mm-hmm. You know, well, you find the same thing you said about your setter. Mm-hmm. You know, different temperament than the other setter. They're all they all look the same though. Yeah, they're all different. And so when I start, and this all goes to being able to have a lot of dogs in your life and being able to read them. I kind of make the decision, like, is this a battle I want to fight, or am I okay with just what she's doing? Mm-hmm. And, yes, if you want to go to UT test, you're gonna, if you want to get a top score, you're going to have to have a... Oh, it's a, smart a, to do it anyway. It's smart to do it anyway. Mm-hmm. You're going to have to have a good retrieve to get a good score. You don't have to have a perfect retrieve. But dog's got to hold that bird with purpose. Um, if he wants to do that, I'm going to say right now, if you say you have a decent hold and carry, that's not good enough. Yeah. you got to have a... You can get a perfect hold and carry out of a dog. Mm-hmm. Doesn't mean you're going to get a perfect retrieve. Yeah. But hold and carry, if the guy, I don't know, he didn't say about watching my video, hold and carry, at least when I'm doing it, I can tug on that bumper. And that dog has already learned it. Uh, not until he gives me the command and I feel his hand here. I think he just doesn't have a good hold and carry yeah. myself. He doesn't but, sound like it. If no. The dog's- if, he's just, if it's still just balancing it in the mouth with a poor hold, you got to go back to wherever you are, your place board, your table, or whatever, and get that hold and carry really clean. And there was one thing in there that my in- immediate reaction was, be careful. When he starts describing a dog laying down and, and turning its head away, it's, it's, and then at the beginning he talked about how she was a good natural retriever. Right. I'm going, man, yep. you're walking a fine line here right. behind taking what something she's already pretty good at, and you might... Screw it up. Screw it this right. up, you know? Yeah. So you got to be real careful there. Right. And be, work with the dog. What, if you're getting that behavior out of the dog, what, it's, it's too much. Right. Whatever you're doing that's right, right. causing that. Is, that is a telltale sign. Yeah. You're either doing something wrong or you did something wrong. You're, you're in the middle of doing it wrong. Or you already did something wrong because... Yeah, maybe. Or, or just, it may not, what, exactly what he's doing... May barely even register with another dog, but for yeah. that individual, it's a little overwhelming. She just wants it to go away. She That's wants, what yeah. laying down is turning her head. She just wants it to go away. Yeah. Go, she doesn't stop. understand why this is happening. I'm to confused. Her. Yeah. 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 So anyway, that'd be another guy I'd like to talk to on the phone someday. Um, yeah, it, it, it sounds. See, he's talking about messing with the ear pinch already, but he already doesn't have the good hold and carry. And I so think, I think it's kind of, like you said, scaring and confusing the dog. And I wonder, because he's just starting down this road with both of them, right? right. He sounds like he's at a fairly early stage with yeah. his other dog, and now yeah. he started this one. You know, if this is his first time down this path, right. I would find someone who's done a bunch of this, and I'd pay him for his time to spend a little time with him and, and do a little lesson. Yeah, with him there. So and his dog. And his dog. Yep. yep, with him there. Right. Say, hey, I really want to do this myself. I'm interested. I got the time. Yep. What am I, am I missing something here? Right. You know? Yeah, that would, you're right. Some of these things, there's, I don't think you could, I don't think you could become a good force retriever trainer Without having somebody take you through the steps. Well, without doing a pile of You couldn't of do dogs. it off of YouTube, is what no, I'm saying. No, because the dogs are all so different. You can imitate what you're seeing on YouTube, but you're not going to be able to translate results into that dog. And, well, and you're so not, you're right. Go you're, to a trainer for... And you're not seeing what came 
before with that dog right. and you're not and it's different every one of them is going to walk through that process yep. a little bit different right and yeah. so he and would get, be really wise to help. seek out if, if these are indeed is for and i think they otherwise he would know how to deal with this stuff, right right you right. know sounds like he's got two dogs almost damn near the same age and uh yeah. So yeah, and, and you know I am not going to tell this guy I'll oh, do this or I'll oh, do right, that. Right. I have some I have some ideas that pop into my right. head, but I don't ever want to give anyone bad advice. No, I exactly. don't know his dog. Right. Yeah. Right, right. And I like the fact that he said I'm planning on running UT tests sometime in the next year. I'm glad he wrote or so. Mm-hmm. So from what I'm seeing here, let's go or so. You should it, run it when it, when the when dog's ready. ready. Right. Don't be in a hurry to do yeah. anything with a dog yeah. other than hunt season. That's right. <laughs> Uh, question for Justin. I wrote in last time. You guys helped me out tremendously. Uh, I am working on retrieving with her to refresh you. Oh, we did this one. A one-year-old Brittany that's now in her first full season. Um, she's bird's kid, not reliability. I have started. Yeah, we answered this. Okay. One. Yeah, that was a yeah, duplicate. Yeah. yeah, that was a duplicate. Oh, here's the, uh, here's the Gordon Setter with the picture. <laughs> Okay. This one. Oh, yeah. All right. I have a Gordon Setter. Field bred. Will be two years old this June. Hunted here in Alabama with him on dove, quail, and snipe. Loves it and not gun shy. My question pertains to the use of training tables. Recently, his delivery has gotten sloppy, so he starts to parade around with bumpers and tennis balls. And I want to steady him up and work on the trained retrieve. So I built a table. See below. He sent us a picture. And this guy gets like a... I'm going to give him at least... A solid A on his table construction. I mean, this is a guy, no joke. He, no, no, when he is, says he built a table. Yeah, he <laughs> built a he built a table that could could have multi functions. Yeah. Um, I will say about your table, the one problem with it is don't park it up against the wall of the garage. If that's yeah. really where he's working his dog. So you know what jumped out at me, and it right. could such be the picture. You know, sometimes right. the angle right. play with that. Right. My first reaction was, "Wow, this guy went a long mile. Make sure this yeah. thing is rock solid." Yep. It struck me as a little narrow when I first looked at it. Okay. Now it could just be the angle. Oh, those are five quarter boards. So okay, so it's you know more. Twenty about. inches. That's probably twenty inches wide. I use twenty four, but it's good. So. Okay, you yeah. your your board. I'm going to say that's twenty four. That's a. Yeah, mine table's okay. 24. I haven't measured mine. Yeah. I don't know what it is. <laughs> do you own a tape measure? No. Yeah, oh, I have, no, I have one. Do I do? Yeah. But I'm guessing these are looks like five-quarter deck so boards. You're, you're taking the builder approach to measure. Well, he's from using slotted angle. I, I bet you I know where this guy got this okay. from. Yeah, see, I don't anyway. know any of that stuff. Okay, uh, so, so it's yeah. probably just the angle. Built a nice table. It's, a leg- it's really important. I, I mean, not important. Yeah. It's, a, it's a great tool. Um, but I do want to say, before we get into the question... Because what you showed me on your table, which has the cable mm-hmm. for using, you know, for the holding the dog up there, you like to be able to walk around that table and approach the dog from different sides mm-hmm. and everything. So, if you can pull that table away from the garage, learn get to on do the this. back side. Yeah, get on the get on both sides of your dog. If he if he's got, I, I mean, that just kind of keeps it out of the way. Like right. obviously in his yard, it, right, right. Some part, so yeah, it's not on wheels. But anyway, all right, let's go back to the the question. Hunting here in Alabama, ducks, quail, snipe. Loves it, not gun shy. My question is use of training tables. Regarding his, his delivery got sloppy. He's starting to parade with bumpers and tennis balls. And I want to steady him up and work on training retrieve. So I built a table seen below. Initially, he seemed to love the table. It was a game, and for him, always tail high and happy. Eventually, though, he slipped and fell off the table while attached to the pulley. I know in Delmer Smith's book, he says if a dog falls off, do not pick him up and let him learn to get back up himself. But I'm a tall guy, over 6'3", so my table's high. Frankly, wasn't sure he'd be able to get back up by himself, so I caved in and helped him. I would have. I would have too. Yep. Uh, unfortunately, ever since that, he's shaking on a table and shows no interest in picking up bumpers or tennis balls. The dog had a little PTSD session, a little, little trauma. Um, it's almost as if he's so distracted by his fear that he can no longer focus on any task at hand while on the table. Trying to be extra cautious because when he's a pretty good solid dog before all of this happened and have always taken it slow, but frankly not sure how to reintroduce him to, reintroduce him to the table without getting him so anxious. Any advice would be helpful. Now we're taking steps backwards. It seems his training, at least on the table, 
is when a tra- when training on the table is involved, his is going backwards. Well, the dog obviously got hung, basically. Well, he was it, it was traumatic for him what right. happened, right. and you know you, you have to make a if a if you have that happen, you got to make a real quick decision. Can this dog get himself back? Because he says I, I didn't like he kind of like blamed himself, like oh I caved in and helped him right. up. Well, if he can't get himself back up there, you got to help him. Right, you right. have to yeah. help him. Was what? How yeah. long do you wait? No, like <laughs> yeah. not very long. Like not no. very long. And so, yeah. but it was traumatic to the to the dog, obviously. But it makes and maybe me, that's why he put the thing against the wall. He didn't well, tell me. I don't know. Maybe or, the dog fell on the opposite side of him. Yeah. Um, but the tail's down now in that yeah, picture. Yeah. And if the dog was of normal temperament mm-hmm. and had a really long baseline of the table being a fun place to go, that's why I always recommend to people that they do not. Um, introduce the table and then dive right into this stuff just make the table a fun place to be uh, for a while here you go you get yep. padded treats yep. brushed out there's all kinds of other stuff yeah. we use tables for yeah and uh, before you even dive into any of the mechanics of the trained retrieve right um the only other thing i saw is the table looks a little slick almost almost like there's some kind of yeah, finish. it was, it like was it's either raining or he varnished it yeah. i can't tell from i would the i would put um some sort of grippier surface on that, and mm-hmm. it shouldn't really matter in the long run. But you know what's really slick is they make a product for people's decks. It's like a real thick paint that's got, oh, it's got grit. grit in it. It's yeah. got grit in it. You yeah, roll yeah. it on. Mm-hmm. It, that's the perfect surface right. for that. Yeah, it's, the yeah. dog's got a little traction in there, right. but it's, it's out. It's made for outside stuff. Right. I love that stuff for the tables, but. Um, he should get over it, but should it doesn't isn't a hundred percent of the right, dog. So right. to help the dog get over it, time is good. The other thing that would possibly help him is to move it, get it. That's move it to a new place, fresh yep. start. Um, and I'm going to throw one piece in there because I don't use the table with the cable on top. And I, I you showed me, and we just, messed yeah. we messed around with one of my dogs out in your back, and and you're always there. You know, where if that dog did slip, you're there to. Oh yeah. You, there's no right waiting away. there. There's oh. no waiting. Oh, you're right back on. Um, <clears throat> it, and if he likes doing that, if he does move this table and mess with the dog, start just sitting on this table and giving the dog a treat. Let this dog know like this is a great place. You mm-hmm. know, kind of desensitize him to what happened on the table. And the next time you get him up, don't, don't. Don't put that chain up to the cable yet. Put him on the pole until either. he's really used to like. If, if he like that table again, one little step at a time. He yeah. should go back to how he was before. Right. He should. Right. Um, but every now and then, certain dogs. I mean, oh, yeah. they don't. That might always be. Bad. It's like a horse that and, sees a. Uh, a round rock. So again, on picking yeah. your battles, okay. Yeah. Remember, this is just he's this dog is retrieving, but he's just parading a little right, bit. Right, right. Okay. Right. Well, there's other ways to take care of that. You know, you can do this on the ground. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You absolutely, yeah, absolutely. can do this absolutely. on the ground. You, this is not something that must be no. done on a table. Not at all. No. Mm-hmm. So there's so many different pathways to the same end. Yeah. So if you have to obey, right. rather than fight this, right. find another way. Yeah, yeah. Go to uh, go to the ground. Do it on know, the ground, do, and yeah. and then give it time. Sure. Yeah. Sure. But nice job on the slotted angle. So you wouldn't even know what that was called. That's called slotted it's angle. Metal. Yeah, but it's perforated metal angle with I oblong see, I, I vertical see, yeah. hole. Handiest stuff in the world. I always I keep a bundle of it around. See, like a guy like anything. Out most of the guys I see are using like two by fours or wood. Or yeah, but yeah. they're not. They're not millwrights. I bet yeah. you he's a millwright. <laughs> I, I'm impressed with that guy's table. Yeah. Yeah, number one thing it's got to be solid. You just know that thing doesn't wiggle one no, no. bit. By you, the way, you can't it's built solid, or it can't have wiggly. Yeah. Um, I just when I went to Boise, I went to my buddy's to get one of his poodle pointers to show some stuff with, and I said to Bob, assuming he's a he's an old nav to judge, older than me, I said, can I borrow your training table too? And I rented a pickup just to do that, and he goes, I don't use a training table anymore. <laughs> you know, yeah. He, he just goes to the ground and does it. To your point. He used to do it on a table. Now he steadies him up on the ground or force fetches him on the ground, you know. Sure. But because I wanted to show people how I like it, I went to Builder's Square and or Home Depot and I bought one of these Werner lockout mm. benches, mm-hmm. just an elevated platform just to show them. But I would not have used it if it wasn't – I could have stood up there and done a dance on it. Yeah. And that, to your point, if you're going to build something or do something like that, 
it shouldn't be like a, a kayak in the water. No, no, no. It's we're not talking about a blow barrel here to steady a dog up and keep his balance on it his toes. It needs to be as solid as I the mean, ground. Solid as your tailgate on your pickup truck. Yeah. If not better. Yeah. yeah. And uh, if it's not working, don't fight it. Do it all on the ground. Yeah. Yeah, just do, mm-hmm. go to the ground. Um, with force fetching, how much will the dog fight? Because my dog seems to thrash and bite. So you remember when I told the other guy, probably wouldn't be a bad idea to seek out some help from someone who's done a lot of this? It'd be the same. It's like triple for that person. Yeah. I mean, he has a fundamental lack of understanding of what's going on right. there. If he's not, if he can't answer that himself, right? You know, with this dog is thrashing and biting, and he's doing something wrong. He's doing he's something un- wrong. He's missing something. Right. And again, it's not that I don't want to help him. Right. I don't want to tell him the wrong thing. Right. And so he needs some hands-on help. Yeah. Um. So that one's always a little worrisome. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Is that the end of these? That's I had a couple of, things texted to me we could wrap up yeah, with. Yeah, we'll save that's... these for another okay. another one because so, it's 521. I know. we got to get boogie. So a couple things to finish up then real quick because I had a couple things texted to me. Yeah. Uh, one is on the – well, actually, I guess they're both on the retrieving thing. So okay. we'll wrap it up with that. Yeah. So one is by a guy I know and um, – has two setters, young dogs. I know this guy. Okay. Um, and he said he wants them both to retrieve to hand, mm-hmm. um, but n- not want to do force training to retrieve. What method would I recommend? He wants to retrieve the hand, but two, two setters. Doesn't want to use force fetch. Yep. Doesn't two young English retrieve. setters. Okay. Yeah. What method would you recommend? Hmm. Prayer? Prayer's always good, <laughs> yeah. especially in a foxhole. <laughs> especially in a foxhole. So I've heard it works. <laughs> it, in time, he should know, and this guy hunts a lot. Yeah. Um, in time, he should know what he has naturally. He right. may not have to do the full program. Right. But for most dogs, to get them to put them right in your hand each and every time, right. you're going to do some version of that. Yeah, yeah. It may not have to be the full. A to Z program. Right. Now, if it's not the full A to Z program, there may be times they don't do it perfect, right. and you can't because you, you didn't go the whole. Can't thing. ask for perfection. You can't, no, exactly. If you so, haven't seen perfection in your backyard, yeah, you're not going to see it in the field. Now he should know these will be second season dogs coming up, yeah, and he should know by the end of that kind of where he sits right. and really what they need. He's mostly a grouse and woodcock kind yeah. of really nice dogs. I've yeah. seen him work, and, and he spends a tremendous amount of time with him. So. I can give him a little help on right. some things he can start but with he, doing. Yeah. It's either prayer or force fetch. Pretty much. Okay. Well, it's genetics you're relying on, and they, right. it either is or isn't right. there. Okay. So the other thing retrieving related that was texted to me, a friend of mine, I got a text, and uh, so I read it, and it said, did you fall down and hit your head and actually tell someone this? And there was a picture attached to it. So I tapped the picture. Uh-oh. What's this? And it's a review of your podcast of our last question and answer. Mm. And where um, it was actually not a review of your podcast, it was a review of me. And (laughs) where I earned two of five stars from this guy's opinion. And his quote was, not playing fetch with a puppy until it's 18 months old is the dumbest thing I ever heard. I thought about it. I go, no, I didn't tell anybody that. And so we had a pile of retrieving questions last time. And I remember we hit some young ones where I did advise some people, hey, back off. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait a little bit. Hunt this dog. Strengthen your come when called. Right. Pretty sound advice for a young pointing dog puppy. Yeah. And, um... But I know, I, I never answered one of those questions. Wait a minute, how old is that? Yeah, no, 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 you should not play fetch it's with not, your... You it, always it, test the waters right. with a puppy, yeah. and some of them latch right onto it. Right. Don't let that pass you by. Right. Go for it. Right. But if it's not going well, right. take a step back. Right. Why isn't this going right. well? And I'm not going to advocate somebody six, seven, eight months old you know, force train that dog right Right. now. I don't think that's good advice. And I don't think continuing to do things that aren't going well is good advice. So what does that leave? What I kind of... But then you said you almost think people are doing too much with some of these puppies. You asked me while we were answering those. I said, absolutely, I do. Well, how many of these said tennis balls and bumpers in the yard... Mm. 
But they don't like what it's doing with the bird. Yeah, you get everything, yeah. and and most yeah. of it will will or won't straighten itself out. You may need to do the trained retrieve, but you don't need to jump right on that. Mm-hmm. And um, but what I think, so while I did not say that to anybody, yeah. I think. He had to have heard something. What did this guy hear that sent him down that path? And then I went, ah, bingo, I know what it was. So you said, so like when you raise a puppy. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't really even do, care about you care about that. Yeah. You don't even play retrieving yeah, games. I answer, it. Right. And so yeah. that's what he heard that really struck him as out of left field. Right. And so I said, yeah, I got a puppy right now. So this was last right. what, November yeah. or December yeah. or something. I said, yeah, I got a puppy right now. I've never thrown a darn thing for a tree. So he took that and as, went, boof. As Justin's a, your path. I'm two out of five stars. <laughs> and so, and I did take that path with my dog. Dog, but yeah. I did not go into why right. on that podcast. Right. And that's because this isn't about what I'm doing with my puppies. This is about this stack of questions here. Right. Right. So I don't want to burn up a bunch of time. Yeah. But for those that care, why? Well, I can understand how somebody would hear that and go, man, that doesn't make any sense. He doesn't sense. do retrieving until how a year would and a he, half old? How would yeah. he not do that? Right. Okay. Right. So if, here's, here's why. Um, I saw a lot of instinct to pick up and carry stuff when this dog was growing up as a puppy. Just random puppy objects that are in the exercise yard in the puppy pen around my house. Mm -hmm. Left alone. Never made a game of it throwing because she's a very excitable puppy. Right. Went away. Um, Got a really good come when called built into her as she grew up in that first year. Mm -hmm. And this is not my first time down this pathway because I knew her great grandmother. I know her grandmother. I know her mother. I own a littermate sister to her mother. <laughs> I work two other dogs out of that litter. Okay? Right. So this isn't exactly uncharted water for right. me. This is an educated guess based on what I know is in that dog's genetics. Right. And I feel that this is my best way to get a decent natural genetic retrieve right. out of this line of setters. That dog. So I, I, yeah, I wouldn't, I you know I'm not just going to haphazardly go, you know what? <laughs> I think I'm just going to ignore that until they're 18 months <laughs> right, old. So right. she's a year old. I know what I'm doing. I know right. I, with, I think, I think I've made the right call. With that dog. With that dog. Right. I would never tell anyone, don't play fetch until it's eight. That's, right. that would truly be the dumbest thing, wouldn't it? <laughs> right? Yeah. So, yeah. So I wanted it was more of a clarification. My right. friend got a kick out of reading that yeah. because he goes, "No, something's." I've known right. Justin for twenty years. Right. He wouldn't tell someone that. Yeah. But we could, here's we can make this interesting. You want to make it interesting to wrap it up? Yeah. So that dog's twelve months old now. Right. You saw her today. We took her for just a little field right. run. Right. Right. We got a pretty good come one called in her. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Real nice. We could let today be the very first time that we throw something for her and see what she does. Yeah. Let's find out. All right. Okay? Let's... And here's the deal. We're going to a Rough Grouse Society banquet tonight. Yep. If that dog doesn't pick up something and carry it around, I'm going to have a check cord on her, right? This is the yep. first time. Yep. If she walks out there and stands over something and goes, duh, I, you, you're an idiot for not playing with me, I'll donate 100 bucks to RGS in this guy's name. All right. All right. Let's go see. Thanks, Justin. You bet. See ya.